Hey guys, I'm back today with another design team project for the Not Too Shabby Shop. Here is Jamie's information, but as always, it will be listed below. I'm going to be bringing in these products. This is the MFT You Gnome Me with the old style die set that I purchased a long time ago with this stamp set. And I have the two new Lawn Fawn releases, the Border Dies and the Mushroom House die that I'll be using today which is going to be my main focus. So here I have used the back picture as kind of a guide and I've cut everything out. The house and the mushroom hill, I used a very vanilla instead of a white. And I have these two dies. Does anyone know what these are for? <laughs> I'm thinking it's for a doorknob for the door instead of the keyhole, which is what I use. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking, but if you have this set or have seen videos, I haven't watched anything, on what those two dies are for, let me know. So here I am just going to show you me assembling everything. I use art glitter glue to assemble everything. I wanted it to be quick. Obviously you have little pieces, so a, a tape runner is not going to do, do you any good. Um, and I'm just using my reverse tweezers to attach all the little pieces. This was so easy to assemble. Um, again, I'm using that picture as kind of a guide as to where things go. Of course, you can do whatever you want. Um, but once you get past the die cutting, it goes really fast. I did use a darker red for the red pieces of the mushroom. I thought that looked a little bit better as well again I used very vanilla from Stampin' Up to um, for the body of the mushroom I guess for a lack, of, a lack of better term instead of white I thought that looked more realistic I had to get in there um, to do the little window the door is so cute because it can open the piece that's not cut through is not scored of course, that would be easy to score if you wanted it to really open, but it it does open a little bit. Here is the little, um, what do you call it? It holds the lantern, like light pole. The You can use multimedia matte, obviously, or matte multimedia, whatever it's called. Obviously, that is great glue that will dry matte. Um, I am in love with my art glitter glue that also dries matte. So um, if you're not familiar with art glitter glue, the glitter means nothing. That's just what it's called. Um, and I love it. I My multimedia matte, I used to use all the time, but it comes in such a little bottle. And it gets clogged. And it's for me, it's really hard for me to get any out. And it's, like I said, it's clogged. And I'm not messing with it. I need a devote some time to unclog it and, and fix it but for now I use my art glitter glue which is perfect which does get clogged occasionally but um, I typically can can get it undone it's just easier for me to work with because it's bigger I am popping up some of the images the little um, chimney the grass pieces I did pop up and here I kind of slow things down so you can see what it looks like. Isn't that adorable? So cute. Really easy to put together. I'm not a big fan of fussy cards and this one was pretty easy. So here are the old-fashioned dies and what I've done is I've taken my paper and I've cut out the die cut and I'm putting the stamp in the die cut piece because these dies are solid so there is no way that I would be able to line it up once I've stamped it. So I put the stamp in the die cut area and then I put the actual die cut back into its place on the paper, just like this. And I go ahead and stamp it out. Now, I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do it. Um, I have seen people do it this way, so that's kind of what I'm doing. If you know a better way, let me know. And then I go ahead and stamp it down. Now, this took me, after I did this one, because the ink smudged and it was a little bit, a little bit too much ink on the hat area, it took me five more times to get it right. <laughs> so, um, you know, just be patient with that. Thankfully, dies do not come that way anymore. Since I've already die cut it out and I have to color it, I just stuck a piece of washi tape on a scrap piece of paper and attached it to the back of my image. That way, 
I could hold my image still without holding the image. It gives me a little bit of a, a tab to hold. So I am sorry, I'm showing the colors, but there is a glare, so you really can't see them. But um, I used some E, that's E00, I believe. But the, it's a, um, typically I try to grab from what the skin tone pack is of the Copic markers for my skin tone. This is N9 that I'm doing the boots and the little belt buckle. I believe this is N5. Really easy coloring, nothing special. Here's N7, a little bit darker to add some shadowing. Um, I'm going really slow. I've sped this up quite a bit. And here I've zoomed in, so now you can see the colors. I, I, um, what was I gonna say? I, like I said, I'm keeping the coloring very simple. I'm no expert at coloring. I just try to add a little bit of shading so it does not look like such a flat image. Um, but I think it, it turned out really cute. I do, I did stop the video at one point and look up how people colored these gnomes. Like I said, this is a fairly old stamp set, I'm pretty sure, especially with those dyes. So, there was a lot of inspiration on Pinterest, and I loved the color combo of the green and brown that I saw. Of course, you can color these whatever images you want, but I kind of wanted it to be true to what you see gnomes colored. So I love the, like I said, the green, kind of the mossy, grassy green, and the dark brown, kind of a clay or so brown, something like that. <laughs> Once I'm done coloring, I just take that piece of paper off with the washi tape. It comes right off. There you go. I love that little gnome. Oh my gosh, they're so adorable. It is the most adorable stamp set ever. Um, Lawn Fawn. This is Salty Ocean, by the way, and I'm just bl blending out a sky on some Bristol Smooth cardstock. But Lawn Fawn also released a gnome stamp set, and I didn't get that one because I knew I had this MFT one. Of course, as you'll see, the little guy is huge. Here I have sprayed some water onto my sky and it's more like blops instead of droplets like I wanted, but we just went with it. I didn't, I didn't care, whatever. Um, I'm taking a very vanilla card base and I will attach everything to the card base. The house, the gnome, and the sentiment are popped up, and I stamped the sentiment and die cut it out off screen. Now, um, like I said, the gnome is huge compared to the house. I realized that. I did try to like think about perspective. Okay, I'm gonna put the house up high, unfortunately covering some of these hill mushrooms, but um, you know, the house is in the background and then the gnome would be towards the front. But um, Lawn Fawn did come with that uh, new gnome stamp set adorable but again I decided not to purchase it because I knew had I had these gnomes I don't need two gnome stamp sets but eventually I may purchase that one because the images are smaller and would go really well with the mushroom house but I love that little house it is so cute and this little guy I just like the way he looked but I do go ahead and add some highlight to the shovel and his hat and that will complete this card. So head on over to the Not Too Shabby Shop to see what she has available. Don't forget to use coupon code CRAZYPAPERCHICK to save 10% off your order and US orders over 60 ship for free. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll catch you next time. Bye.